On this episode of Florida Roadside Attractions and Abandoned Places, we begin driving south on Highway 17. Another warm and sunny Florida summer day is upon us. A perfect day, a perfect setting for an adventure. And so it starts right here at this railroad crossing at the end of this drive. When I turned off of Highway 17, it said dead end. And it dead ends right here. Right in front of me. And right on the other side of these railroad tracks just goes into a property. And I believe that property is owned by the company of Mosaic. There's a sign over there. The sign's old. It's got bullet holes in it. Certain points, railroad crossing sits before the tracks here. Also a stop sign, report problems for emergency and private railroad crossing. Look both ways. There will be no warning if you were to come down here at night or during the day, whenever, if a train comes, there are no arms right here at this crossing. Just walking up the railroad tracks a little bit. Always think of the movie Stand By Me. One of my favorites. And here you go. Beyond this fence line, property owned by Mosaic. Florida Phosphate Company. It's beautiful out here. It's very quiet too. No trespassing, Entrada illegal, mosaic. Look, there's a lizard on top of the fence post there. You see him right there? Let's see if I can get close. There you go. Hello, buddy. How's it going? Good morning. Welcome back to Florida Roadside Attractions and Abandoned Places. I am Tampa J. Today we're heading into Hardy County. I'm gonna head down 17 here and we're gonna explore the little town of Wachula and see what there is to see. Also, we're gonna explore, once again, the legend of the Bloody Bucket Bridge. And that would have been, would have been my next shot. Oh boy, I can tell you what. I've been doing this, making videos, bringing them back after an adventure, editing them for five, six years now. This is the first time I've ever encountered such a weird happening. And just to show you, here's my camera. I'm using my phone now. It's upside down. This is the Canon G7X. It's what I film on. I used it for a couple of years. Right there's the battery and the door is open. The memory card right here. You pull it out, you put it in the computer, you edit the video, I've done it so many times. So back on the camera, I'm using a different memory card obviously because I believe this one right here is cursed. All right, here we go. I've got a tripod set up. We are filming now in one of our three bedrooms. This is Chris the girl and I's house here, our new place. We just moved in about a month ago. If you've been paying attention, I've showed tidbits Chris has shown a lot of this place over on her channel. Uh, Chris the girl, my fiance, lovely fiance. Oh, first off, let me say congratulations to Chris. Her channel, doing amazing. She's been killing it over there, uh, doing the spooky shopping series. And I just wanna say I couldn't be more proud. Good job, babe. Back to the story. We left off in the video that I edited two minutes and 18 seconds and we get to that house. So I pull up to that house, it's a creepy house and I just explain, you know, this is cool, old Florida house, just like I typically do on the Florida roadside attractions and abandoned places series that was going to be a part of that catalog. So yes, I'm explaining about the house and then I move on and then eventually I get to Wachula and I do a bunch of things in Wachula, which I plan on doing again someday. It's never gonna be the same experience. I went there, I recorded it, I lost the footage. Whatever comes out next will totally just be, I'm just gonna make it totally different. You know, you can't get that back. That is one reason I am so upset right now. I'm frustrated that I lost the whole day. You know, basically went all the way down there to Wachula and back. And, lost that so okay back to it so i end the video as i say at the bloody bucket bridge and i retell the story i had told before i kind of give more of a cliff note 
kind of session about it. A shout out to our friend Mark Muncy. I talk about his time there at the bridge telling the story. He wrote about it in his books. Um, so basically, I go down under the bridge and come back a similar route I took last time, but not the same. And there's a moment when I'm walking up the hill back to my car. The car's parked over here uh, on top of the hill. You walk down over to the bridge. So my car's up here. I'm walking up the embankment. There's kind of like a boat launch down there. I'll show you a picture in a minute of the bridge. I took a couple pictures. But I'm walking back up after I just told the creepy story and I hear something. And to me, when I hear weird things that I, I can't explain right away, I try to basically just use science and use explanation fact. And immediately I hear what I think and the, hair, the hairs on my arms stand up. And I eventually explain this in one of the shots that were erased from existence. But I hear what I thought was a lady screaming. So I look back and I see like a bunch of, I think they were dragonflies, just kind of flapping. And I'm just like, oh, okay. That must be, you know, that horde of dragonflies. It kind of sounds like them buzzing, but at a distance it sounded with the story in the back of my mind and what I had just said before, prior, which I'll get back to that in a second. I thought it sounded like, you know, like a, a lady, uh, like screaming. So here I am, I fire up the camera and I explain what just happened and I say, you know, over there in the shot prior, I was just explaining that sometimes, you know, the legends become bigger than the places. Is this place actually haunted? Is there someone here? And I explain that the Peace River in that spot, as I said the time prior, I said it just feels like a peaceful place. I don't feel anything bad going on here. I'm not an expert on ESP or anything. I I, um, I didn't feel anything. Uh, it didn't feel bad, basically. You go to a lot of places, haunted or not. Sometimes the places just felt peaceful. And then that moment when I was walking back up the hill after that one, when I thought I heard the lady, I fired up the camera again and I said, you know what? Maybe someone heard me just say that. Sometimes when you question the haunting or the haunter, in this case, the lady from Buddy Bucket Bridge, the midwife, sometimes they want to make their presence known. Now, I let it get quiet, listened, moved the camera around, right there below the bridge to the right, very quiet, just a couple cars going by sometimes, heard nothing. I finished the video right then and there walking up to my car and then I drive all the way home. I sit down in the room over there and I start editing my video and then the rest is history. I get to the 2 minute 18 second mark. I put in the card. Um, I take out the card because the file that I was trying to use at that moment of that house was not loading. It was not letting me drop down into the editing software into iMovie, which is weird because that's never happened to me before. Um, sometimes it happens and I just duplicate the file and the file works. And so I tried that and this may not make sense to you. Um, if you haven't edited before, it's it's kind of complicated. So basically the file did not work. The specific clip that I was trying to use, the last clip I tried to edit did not work. So I naturally uh, closed out everything and I ejected the memory card. So you click eject, not physically, but on the computer. Eject the memory card and then I physically took it out, put it back in, and then the memory card file popped up, I clicked on it, and all my files were erased. I have no idea how that happened. I started this by saying, I've done this for many years, 
I've never seen anything like, thing like this before. I started thinking back throughout my day um, with my camera, anything that weird that had happened, nothing out of the ordinary. I've done everything the same that I've always done. It's actually kind of, I can close my eyes and do it, you know, you edit, you film, you edit, you upload, you do it all. It's become repetition. Nothing out of the ordinary I can think of. Where I went today, the Bloody Bucket Bridge. Now you're probably like, okay, will you tell us the story of Tampa J? Well, again, I will go back out there and I will tell the story for sure, but I think I owe it to you to go back into it right now, just because it's a very creepy, haunting creature feature story. So it does go with the subject matter, but did the midwife from the Bloody Bucket Bridge curse my memory card. I don't know. It's far-fetched, but nothing else adds up. And also, the house that I was filming. That is when, that is the clip in the beginning. When I was filming that house, that's when everything went astray. That whole clip was gone. And I was talking about how the house looked creepy and how it potentially could be haunted. And so there's a lot of weird stuff going on. And also, I will say this. When I was going out, I will say this about the video, I didn't want to tell you too much about what I filmed because I'll go back and do it. But when I was going out to the Bloody Bucket Bridge, I actually went the wrong way and I approached the wrong bridge. Even though I've been there before, I thought it was east, right outside of town, straight east, due east, outside of Main Street of Washula. There is a bridge there, but there's the Bloody Bucket Bridge, which is on Griffin Road, is south. So I went the wrong way, and then when I realized that I say it in the video that's gone, erased from existence, I say it and then I look up and there's a cloud of smoke, giant mushroom cloud of smoke, and I say something like, well, it's not black smoke, so it's probably not a house or a building, it's brown. So I say, oh, that's probably a brush fire. So I get going out this road here, and I think it's like Highway 64 or something, and I realized that that fire is so big it's probably five or six miles away, so curiosity got the best of me. So I keep driving out, and finally I reach the site of the fire. And no, I was not planning on stopping on the side of the road. That It was a brush fire. There was a brush truck there, there was a fire engine, and it was a field, a dry field that had caught on fire, and it looked like they were getting it out. So I did get that on camera, so there was a fire out east of um, Wachula today. So I show that and then I head back, I find Griffin Road and I return my second time to Bloody Bucket Bridge. And that's when all that happened. So, years ago, during the time of the Civil War, actually after the time of the Civil War, there is no name for this person, there never has been. Just like stories go, legends go, there are different uh, variations and versions of the Bloody Bucket Bridge. I am going to tell you the one that has heard the most and the one I have been told the most. And also, I'll talk about some other theories, but there was a midwife and she is said to have been an enslaved person that was freed. Um, and right after the Civil War, she married a gentleman and they were either not so sure where they were from, I don't know if it really matters, it was somewhere in North Carolina, Georgia, not too far north, but of the south. But they were married, and for some reason they moved, that couple moved to Wachula. This lady became the town midwife. Now if you don't know what that is, that is a person who helps deliver babies. She'll come over to your house and when you are time, when it's your time to have a baby, she'll help deliver the baby. So long story short, this lady basically would give her care, her help during the birthing process and within a minute of birthing, um, the baby would be born still or stillborn as they say back then. Oh. Just a trigger warning. There might be some words used here, some situations I'm talking about, very descriptive. It's part of the story. She would deliver these babies and things started not adding up. Actually, terrible things started happening. 
all the babies she would deliver eventually would just be stillborn. And it, is, it was said that as soon as the baby was delivered, she would pull it out and say, she would pull like a trick and say, oh no, I'm so sorry. And then immediately she would clean up whatever was left of the birthing process, clean it up, pour it into a bucket, and head down to the Peace River to the former site of the former Bloody Bucket Bridge. And she would pour the Bloody Buckets over into the water. So that's where the term Bloody Bucket came from. And also, if the uh, parents of the stillborn baby did not wish to have the baby back, she would bury the bodies of the infants among the banks of the Peace River right there in that spot that I was today. And the legend has it, long story short, that the area, Bloody Bucket Bridge, right there on the Peace River, is haunted by this legend. There have been sounds heard of babies crying, and also people have seen the lady pour the bucket, the bloody buckets, into the water. Now that is the main portion of the story. Also, sat next to the bridge on top of the hill, there was a bar, a tavern, a roadhouse, years ago. This would have been late 1800s into the early 1900s. And it is said that that bar was called the Bloody Bucket. Now, stories about people getting murdered at this bar, people being shot, people being stabbed, some saying that the whole reason that the Bloody Bucket Bridge story came around was because someone told that story at the bar one night. Also, they say the spirits that were killed at the bar now haunt the area, which is right there. So this is the legend of the Bloody Bucket Bridge. Now, uh, the story of the midwife and the bar in cahoots makes a really big story itself. One could be correct, the other could be correct, they both could be true. There have been so many videos put out there on the subject matter, there are so many. Um, paranormal investigations have been conducted down at the bridge. It is said, the legend is if you go out there at midnight on a full moon and you look at the water, it will turn blood red. There is all kinds of things. Um, it's a cool legend. It's a cool creature feature to tell. And that is what happened to me today. I just basically told the story, did everything like I normally do, filmed my video, came back to edit it, and so I could release it for you guys tomorrow. And a weird happening happened. And I have no explanation on why the footage from my SD card vanished. But that was I cursed by the midwife from the bloody bucket bridge. Well, I don't know, was I? Could have been, could have been. I do know this. I am going to throw away that memory card and I'm going to order a new one. I am not going to take a chance again. And I will return to the Bloody Bucket Bridge and I will retell the story. And this time, I will be sure to sage the area or do something, announce my presence like I normally do. Maybe I forgot to say, hey, you know what? Stay here, don't come with me. Normally I do that when I go to a graveyard and I didn't think about doing that when I left. So maybe something followed me back via my SD card or in my camera, I don't know. If you believe in the spooky stuff, maybe you believe it too. I think it's kind of funny, I mentioned Stand By Me Here's my uh, copy of it, right there. For today's creature feature. Maybe I'll watch that later. Not gonna lie, I'm super bummed that I went all the way down there today and I can't bring you guys with me. It is gone. Sorry about that. And um, I will return. It won't be the same experience, but it will be another experience that's for sure and there were some really cool things so i oh man i wish you were watching those right now but you will i'll i'll return again this has happened to me before and i went back out there i didn't take no for an answer as uh they said in tommy boy and i i made it happen so we will return to bloody bucket 
bridge. Also, something weird was happening to me. Now, this happens sometimes, but I was near City Hall, Wachula, and I was showing the old City Hall, and I was showing all that, and the spot I was before, I don't want to give it away, but a white truck kept circling, like, around where I was, and I'm all on public property. Now, I will say this because there are people who subscribe to me and have, because of other situations that have happened before, I'm thinking of Dallas when I was doing the problem child video, someone basically called the cops on me for filming on a public sidewalk. Um, I've, had a, I've had police officers tell me that I am totally within my right to walk you know, in a public place and film, but there are people that just think you look weird and you're holding a camera walking around and they think you're up to no good, it happens. It actually happened to me twice today in Wachula. The second time was the white truck. The white truck uh, was around me at the first location. I get in my car, I drive about a mile north. In the meantime, I'm doing some other stuff, but I park and I come up to the city hall and I feel this truck slowly going by me and I look and I look on the door and it says city of Wachula. It was a, a city worker, not a police officer or anything like that. But they were obviously following me and they kind of do a U-turn and come to where I was on the sidewalk. So I did one of these and I basically said everything I just said right now. Um, yeah, this truck is following me. I had it in my camera and I was like, I'm not doing anything wrong. They just probably think I'm up to no good. I've got it before, but I'm well within my right to film. I'm here on a public sidewalk, not hurting anyone. I get it. This kid with the Tampa Bay hat, well, not a kid anymore, but this guy with the Tampa Bay hat, the only one walking in this small downtown right now, he's got to be up to no good, right? Yeah, so that happened today too. A lot of weird stuff happened, and it just doesn't add up. So, just a weird day. Whatever I filmed, there was something in that video that the universe did not want me to share today. Did it? I uh, happen to be something to do with the Bloody Bucket Bridge legend. Could have been. I mean, could have been. I think so, maybe. <laughs> yep, so there you go. Welcome to my place. And this is a unique video. Again, I'd like to use this opportunity to say thank you for always watching, guys. I have so many plans coming up. There is so much more things to do. I have so many flights booked. I have so many trips booked, mainly for haunt season. And I planned on doing more of a, a video on just talking about my haunt season plans. I love the haunted houses. Haunts on, baby. A lot of creature features coming your way. So I'm planning everything out right now. Halloween has already begun for a lot of people and I've got to start planning. So here we go. Know you're awesome, know you're loved, no matter who you are, what you're going through, there's always much ahead. Right here on this channel and in your everyday life yourself. Get out there, make it happen. I appreciate you guys always watching and sticking with me. Subscribe below, come on back. Tampa J here. Signing off.